Given a context-free grammar, we might be able to produce some string x. However, it's possible there may be more than one derivation of x. This could lead to potential problems. For example, let L be the language of valid summation expressions of single-digit numbers. Let's describe the context-free grammar for L and derive 8 plus 3 plus 5. So our context-free grammar will have terminal symbols, the digits 0 through 9, and the symbol plus. So remember, it's helpful to think of S as representing any string in the language, and variables have no memory. So if S is a valid summation, then so is S plus S. This suggests the production rule S produces S plus S, as well as the rule S produces 0 through 9. So we can write the production of 8 plus 3 plus 5 as starting with S produces S plus S. Then this first S produces 8. Then we'll use S to produce S plus S. Then this S produces 3. And this S produces 5. But note that at the second step, we use the rule S produces 8 and replace the left S. If we replace the right S, we'd have S produces S plus S. This right S produces 5. Then the left S produces S plus S. Then the right S produces 3 and then 8. While these derivations lead to the same string, the steps are different. And we obtain two different derivations because we could choose which S to replace. But remember, algorithms have decisions but no choices. And while freedom of choice is important for political systems, it's not a good thing for algorithms. So let's remove our choice and replace it with a decision. If our decision is to always replace the leftmost variable, we have a leftmost derivation. We could have chosen otherwise. If we chose instead to always remove the rightmost variable, we'd have a, let's think of a good name for this, how about, no, 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 how about rightmost derivation? Now, it can be hard to read a derivation like this. To make it easier, we can use a derivative tree. Our root will be the initial symbol, and will branch downwards. The fact that we consistently refer to things that look like this as trees may explain why all my plants keep dying. To find the leftmost derivation, we'll always start with the leftmost variable. And for readability, we'll drop terminal symbols all the way to the bottom. For example, let's produce a derivative tree for this production. So we have our start symbol, and since it's the only symbol, it's the one we'll replace as S plus S. We'll replace the leftmost symbol with the terminal, 8. Then we'll replace the other symbol with the new production, S plus S. We'll replace the leftmost symbol with 3 and the other we'll be replacing with 5, and then we'll drop all our terminals down to the bottom. The decision to always replace the leftmost variable might still produce two different derivations if there's a choice of how to replace the variable. For example, consider the context-free grammar with terminals and production rules, then a squiggle a star a could have several different derivations. So s we could begin with the production rule s star s, replace the leftmost variable, replace the right with s squiggle s, and then replace our terminals and get our production. Or we could have replaced s with s squiggle s, replace the leftmost variable, replace the leftmost variable, and again, and again, which gives us a different production. 
And in this case, the leftmost derivations are different, and this could lead to potential problems when evaluating the string. For example, if instead of star and squiggle, we had plus and times, then the first derivation would compute the value of our start symbol as follows. We'll set a in all the terminal states. s is a or a squared in the second level, and s, our final production, is a plus a squared in the root level. But the second derivation would compute the value of the start symbol as follows. We'll set a in all the terminal states. s is a plus a 2a and a in the second level. And s is 2a times a 2a squared in the root level. And the fact that depending on how we actually do our production, we get different expressions says that the expression is ambiguous over our language. Clearly, we want to avoid that. And in arithmetic, we establish an order of operations so that this expression is not ambiguous. So how can we avoid ambiguity in context-free grammars? In other words, how can we build in an order of operations? Let's take a look at that next.